Or you can do it like that and drop the whole thing in there. It's always a plus. This video is brought to you by Sportland. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We've got a package unit here. This is a Linux package unit. I believe it's a 10 ton, yeah. And uh, the unit has a refrigerant leak. It's actually had a leak for a very long time. Um, right in here, the equalizer line broke off from the pipe right here. I'm gonna end up pulling the top off the unit and you'll be able to see it a lot better, but yeah, the equalizer line completely broke off in there. So it's right here. And it's actually been sitting like this for a very long time. Uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and replace the TXV, the dryer, and we're actually going to change the oil in the compressor because it's been sitting for so long without refrigerant in it that I'm worried that oil is completely beyond saturated with moisture and everything. Um, but before we go any further, what I'm going to do is power the unit up real quick and just bump the compressor to make sure the compressor still functions. The compressor plug was unplugged. It's this one right here. Sounds very quiet. I don't see a problem with that, so I think we're going to be okay. We're going to go ahead and power it down. We're not running it like that, but we're going to power it down. And we're going to have to pull the compressor, which is not my ideal thing to do, but there's no other way to get this oil out of this guy. So Now I certainly can do the work without pulling the top off the unit, but pulling the top off is just gonna make it so much easier. Just being able to see what we're doing. We do have to pull the condenser fan motors out to do so though, so that's what we're doing right now. But once we do that, we just have so much more access to everything. So the top sits right there, that's nice and good. Um, this guy right here, if we look over here, this is what we're gonna be working on all over into here and equalizer line broke off right there. Uh, I'm kind of bummed out with how much everything's shaking in there. Like, I mean, they, you can see down here, it's just like rubbing on the evap coil. It's kind of trashed. At least the blower assembly is nice and clean though. One thing about the Linux units is they don't give you a lot of room to put a suction dryer. Like, ideally I'd put it right here, but that's not gonna fit. I kind of wanted to put a suction dryer on this too because of the issue. Um, I mean, I could theoretically put it here, maybe. I could open it up and see because that is the compressor right there. So if I can, we might fit it in there. Just kind of a pain in the butt to breeze, you know? And for someone to have to replace it ever, it seems kind of silly. Um, I just want a suction dryer just because of the potential of moisture contamination. A little bit more access in here. You can clearly see the equalizer line. I'm trying to think how I want to repipe this because I really want to put a suction filter dryer, but man, I really don't want to put it in here. I wonder if I can fit it in here. I wonder if I can cut it right here, fit the suction dryer right here, and then still have my equalizer line down here. Huh. All right, we're going with the Sporlin high acid catch-all dryer. So this has the HH core inside of it. Um, I went with a bigger capacity dryer. We are gonna have to adjust the refrigerant charge a little bit, but again, I'm worried about moisture. So that's why we're going with the high acid core. Got a couple things going on, but we're removing the compressor right now. Um, it's gonna be kind of fun. I, I'm not a fan of pouring oil out of a compressor, but this is the only way to do this, so. We're gonna pull this guy out. We just disconnected the crankcase heater, pour the oil out. We're gonna pour back in what we get out of the compressor. But we're gonna do that last, so. All right, I weaseled my way up into the unit. Now, we gotta get this stub right here unswet. Hopefully, is the plan. I went ahead and put a zero tip on my torches, so hopefully I don't overheat everything. I'm gonna try to grab that with some pliers and yank it out is the hope. All right, now to try this. There we go. All right, it came out. So now,
and that is why you're prepared for the worst. Hopefully you don't catch the unit on fire. gonna braise the couple things I'm using some viper wet rag right now to protect everything I'm gonna do the bottom joints from the outside so I'm gonna do these top ones from the inside all right we got the dryer and everything all brazed in um, I got to figure out a way to support everything and right now I have the TXV wrapped in a, uh, a wet towel again I know you're not supposed to cool braze joints but I'm more concerned about the TXV being damaged right now than I am a braze joint issue so uh, yeah, that's where we're at. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, measure the amount of oil that we pour out. Now I realize compressors measured in fluid ounces. I've been corrected on that many times, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh the amount of ounces that I actually pour out of it. We're gonna put that exact same amount in, okay? I don't wanna overfill the compressor with oil. With that being said, there could be oil somewhere else trapped in the system, but the crankcase heater has been running, so we should be good, hopefully. Or you can do it like that and drop the whole thing in there. It's always a plus. Not really how I planned it going, but stuff happens, right? Hence why it's not a good idea to pour oil out of a compressor. So it measures about 28 ounces is what we pulled out. I know it's hokey, but it works. We already primed the pump. we're gonna put in it for now we're gonna go ahead and clean it up and put it back in now compressors back we're ready to braze it in everything sanded and cleaned up same thing with the suction dryer I was able to get it in there it's gonna be tight it's gonna be a pain to braze in but we'll get it and this is all done we've still had nitrogen purging through this the whole time so all right we are doing a pressure test right now I got about 200 and something PSI of nitrogen. Now I'm gonna do the tightness test on the field piece manifold, but I like to let it sit for five or six minutes and let everything equalize out and then hit start. Because I noticed that if you hit start right away, the pressure still fluctuated PSI or two. So give it a few minutes. We're just cleaning up, dryers installed. Um, we use the wet rag compound, so we're just kind of getting some of it off. Uh, everything's in here. We, use, we still gotta clean up because we use wet rag on the compressor too. So we're just kind of cleaning the unit up. We're gonna start assembling things and then we'll pull the evacuation and go from there. We got dryers, everything installed. Uh, I've been running a pressure test for about 12 minutes now. We've changed 0.2 PSI. It passes the pressure test. I'm not worried about that. We're gonna go ahead and let the nitrogen out and then pull the evacuation. Uh, just ball valve the evacuation off. 
Uh, we're technically in a decay test right now, although I didn't officially put it in decay mode, but it's already passing. 466 microns, it's slowly rising, but we'll let it sit there for another 10 minutes, make sure we don't get above a thousand. Um, we're just starting to put the top back on the unit, getting that all finished up, and then uh, we gotta put condenser fan motors in and all that good stuff. All right, so we are slowly still rising. 793 microns we're gonna call this one a pass it's been about 10 minutes since you guys last saw it I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hook up my gauges evacuate the gauges real quick so we can do a unit charge on this guy all right I'm about to charge with my manifold but my manifolds not in a vacuum I don't want to pull all the moisture and air that's in my manifold hoses into the system so I'm gonna evacuate the manifold before I open these ball valves all right so the entire manifold is gonna be evacuated I'm open these up Get it down to a good level and then we will fill it with refrigerant and start charging the system but i always do this just to make sure i do the same thing if i'm using smart probes and stuff like that too everything's evacuated we're ready to open up to the system i purged all the way up to here until liquid refrigerant came out we're good on that so we're ready to, we're going to charge in through the high side but we're going to go ahead and open up each of these ball valves and then we're going to go ahead and charge seven pounds eight ounces I believe that's what it's supposed to be into the high school. we are running um system it's okay we're just letting it come down in temperature all compressors are running this one's nice and smooth no issues so we're just uh clean we got a lot of stuff to clean up we're going to clean up all of our messes and then uh start packing this one up i just did a pressure drop test across the dryer so i checked on the top port right there and right here and there's no pressure drop right now at the time it was like 141.2, 141.1, so 0.1. Went ahead and marked it, 0.1 PSI drop across suction dryer. Uh, and that's it, guys. Uh, this one's good, the unit's operating properly. This AC has been down for a very long time. When I say a long time, like two years, okay? Uh, that refrigerant leak, that, that thing has been sitting open to atmosphere for like two years. It's by the coast, there's a lot of moisture in the air, and the leak was in the mixed air cabinet where you know it's just got tons of moisture so that's why i went to the extremes of changing the liquid line filter dryer adding a suction filter dryer doing high acid and also changing the compressor oil i'm not a fan of tipping over a compressor because you run into the risk of dropping it like me dumbass and um, also, you know, it's difficult when you pour it out, that oil gets on the surfaces where you're going to braise it back in. And so you really got to get all the oil off before you go to braise it. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Okay. Unfortunately, on majority of the scroll compressors that aren't the bigger refrigeration compressors, they don't have oil ports on them. So there's really no way to add and remove oil from the system. It really does make you appreciate the bigger refrigeration compressors that actually have an oil port. So that way you can remove the oil and add oil and it makes it so much easier. Um, also, I really, really appreciate oil sight glasses when they have them in compressors too. I kind of wish that they would be putting those in some of the smaller ones because a scroll compressor is such a mystery when it comes to, is it low on oil? Do, you know, How do you tell? There's really no great way to know if a scroll compressor is low on oil other than tipping it over and pouring it out, which is a chore, okay? So um, I know I'm going to get some of these questions and some of this feedback. So I'm going to say, why did you change the TXV? There was no need to change the TXV. Okay, again, this system has been sitting open to atmosphere for so long. I've been afraid. I wanted to make sure that everything was operating properly. Okay, so that's why I added the suction filter dryer, the liquid filter dryer, and I went ahead and changed the TXV too. More than likely, there was nothing wrong with the original TXV, but... I just wasn't comfortable with it just sitting open to atmosphere like that. Also, it was a little bit difficult because of how close it is to the liquid line filter dryer. I was going to be redoing the whole section, so I just got a TXV. Those TXVs are super cheap anyway, so it's not a big deal, okay? Now, I was not able to find a really good way to support all those lines. There's really nothing to do because you don't want to drill through the top of the unit. There's nothing to strap to. It's just kind of a bummer, you know? That's that's one thing I do have to say that sucks about their design is that, you know, it's it's kind of difficult to, to support everything. Um... Other than that, everything else went good. I was very impressed with how quiet those compressors are. Um, yeah, they, they seem to be operating really well. 
Uh, it's not very often, I think I kind of already alluded to this, but it's not very often that I do an oil change like that either. Okay. Again, this was an extreme. Uh, I really, really appreciate you guys making it to the end. Please, please, please consider supporting the channel if you haven't already. Uh, you don't have to monetarily support it. You don't have to give me money. It's as simple as watch the video to the end, okay? Really important. Um, you know, uh, if you guys are so inclined, you can also support it uh, by becoming a Patreon patron, okay? Uh, that's where you just make a monthly commitment to the channel. Uh, you could become a YouTube channel member. That's another way that you can support it. Uh, I have merch available at hvacrvideos.com. Okay, shirts and hats and soon to be potential uh, zip up hoodies, beanies, and maybe even a new shirt design. Okay, I'm working on some stuff right now. Uh, also, if you guys are considering purchasing any tools, all right, if you check out truetechtools.com, all right, and you like their pricing, they have a huge selection of HVACR tools. Uh, use my offer code big picture one word. Okay, you'll save 8% on your order. And if you guys know what you're going to purchase, shoot me an email and I'll generate you an affiliate link that helps me out just a little bit more. Okay. Again, thank you guys so very much. And uh, remember, I do live streams Monday evening, 5pm Pacific. Also, uh, that's work permitting as long as I can get off work in time. Also, Friday evenings about 6.05 p.m., I go live with the HVAC Overtime crew, Adam, Bill, Joe, and myself, uh, and we just kind of talk about the week and just kind of hang out. So definitely come check that out. That's on the HVAC Overtime channel. And yeah, that one's it. We will catch you guys on the next one, okay?